Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us at the OE Expo. For those of you who've been here, thanks for staying with us. And thanks for those of you just joining us. There's also, I'd like to remind you, uh, we're streaming this live and there's a number of people on campus watching today. Our next presentation is on Cal planning. Uh, uh, and if there is time for questions, uh, we'll ask you to use the microphones in the aisles um, so that people online can hear your questions. If there's not time for questions, the team will be joining or will be in the lobby for a half an hour after the presentation to hear your questions today uh, and to discuss with you. And if you don't have uh, time, you need to leave immediately after the presentation, please fill out the uh, evaluation surveys and put any questions you have on there uh, and put it in the box in the back of the room and we'll make sure that uh, we get your question answered. And without any further delay, I will uh, please join me in welcoming the Cal planning team. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I'm Lauren Heller. Uh, I'm the budget director for campus. Um, and I thought maybe we would just introduce ourselves here first before we got going. Good afternoon, I'm John Bain Checkle and I'm the Director of Financial Planning and Analysis Outreach. I'm Kathy Lloyd and I am the Project Manager for Cal Planning and I'd also like to introduce a couple of other team members who are here and sort of wave hello to our team members back at the ranch who are working. Um, on my right here we have Kristen Rose, she's our change lead and we have Mariana Corso who just joined us um, and she is our communications lead. So thanks everybody for coming. Okay. So uh, maybe just quickly, uh, thanks so much for turning out today. It's great to see so many people out there. Um, uh, we're just going to tell you a little bit about Cal Planning and about the new campus uh, budget tool and budget process that is launching on April 2nd now. Um, and uh, I hope we'll have time for some good questions here after the presentation. And if we don't in the room, uh, we will be available in the lobby afterwards. Okay, so a little bit about the agenda. Uh, first, we thought we'd talk a bit about the need for a new budget system. Uh, why is it that campus is thinking about a new budget tool? Uh, talk a little bit about the project status and the schedule, where things are at. Um, and then John's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the way campus has identified financial skills that are needed in the future for our financial planning and analysis folks, our budgeteers. Uh, what's the future skill set look like? And how will the outreach teams, uh, the initiative John's leading, uh, uh, help us to develop those skills here on campus and help us all with the new tool, the new budget process? Uh, um, then we can talk about campus involvement uh, in, the in the project, which has been uh, really awesome. I mean, this has been the best element, I think, of this whole project for me personally. It's just the deep connection that we've had with our campus users uh, all throughout this process. Um, and then maybe some questions. Okay. So the need for a new budget system was really identified as part of the early uh, Operational Excellence Finance Initiative. Uh, I got involved as a member of the design committee for the OE Finance Initiative about a year ago now. And that was one primary focus. Uh, finance leaders from campus had really identified our budget systems as something that had been holding us back uh, in our ability to move to sort of more dynamic, multi-year uh, uh, budgeting processes and improving our data, really. Um, the current campus systems really sort of emphasize what is or even what was really in our finances and don't really fully support us doing a lot of what if analysis or looking forward on a multi-year view for where we're gonna wind up. Uh, and that really could help us out. Uh, in the old world of um, steady state funding, uh, the California Master Plan, uh, the, the current systems worked fine, you know, things were very much, much stable and, and moved along in a predictable manner, but recent times have been anything but predictable. Uh, and we need our financial systems to be nimble in order to keep up uh, with the rapid pace of change in our financial environment. Um, campus would also benefit from having a standardized system and a standardized process for budgeting. Uh, currently, it's really kind of 60 different systems that each unit kind of has their own thing. Uh, we tend to maintain budgets and spreadsheets uh, in offline systems, and those work fine for us to a point, uh, but it's hard to sort of weave a coherent campus picture out of these 60 disparate components. Uh, and Cal Planning is really gonna help us to get 
a common language, a common framework for doing this work going forward. Um, we do need improved financial data and analyses to support our decision making uh, and to support our uh, budget process. And we need to be able to do this stuff easier. Uh, right now on campus, one has to spend a, an, a, an inordinate amount of time coming up with what the number is. Uh, that should be really easy. We should be able to push a button and know exactly what our numbers are, and then that would free us up to think about what they mean and what we might do to improve them, uh, how we could better align our resources with our strategy and our mission. Uh, that should be the work of finance, not boiling down all these crazy reports so that you really understand what the number is. Um, okay. Uh, so John Wilton, uh, our Vice Chancellor for Administration and Finance, has done great work looking at uh, building a, a roadmap for finance and financial transformation on campus. Uh, we identified, I believe the number is 27 different projects that we need to undertake. Uh, one subset of them relate to financial planning and analysis, or budget, and um, that's what we're talking to you about today, but the initiatives are really larger than that even. They're sort of infrastructure change and other financial projects that we really need. Uh, as far as budgeting and financial planning and analysis, uh, where we're going is to a, a budget process and a financial framework that will enable a robust understanding of our financial position and really help us to understand whether we've aligned our resources uh, in keeping with our mission and with our strategy as a campus. Uh, and so, how are we going to get there? How do we move from where we are today, which is really a largely incremental budgeting system, uh, to something that's more dynamic, more forward-looking, uh, and more holistic? Uh, well, um, one thing is through financial planning and analysis outreach, uh, which John will tell you more about later. Uh, this is really about people. This is about our workforce and how we um, invest in our workforce and in training and for the skills that we're going to need in the future. Uh, then there's also changes to the budget process. Uh, we're going to need to get out of incremental budgeting processes and move towards something that's more strategic uh, and more of an all funds view going forward. Um, and then there's Cal Planning, which is an excellent tool. Uh, it's going to be a really transformational tool, I think, for the campus uh, that'll allow us to aggregate budgets, uh, drill through them, get the right level of detail, and plan for everything that we do uh, as separate from actually doing what we do, uh, which is sort of the idea of a budget. Uh, and so really it comes down to people, process, technology, and in talking to our campus users, we really thought they identified that there's really another shift too, which is around mindset. Uh, it's, we're talking about some pretty large changes, and uh, those changes will also involve a change in the way we think about our budgets and uh, the way that we approach budgeting as a campus. Um, okay, so a little bit more about Cal Planning. Uh, so Cal Planning will be the one stop uh, for financial planning, budgeting, and forecasting. Uh, it'll have great reporting tools. Uh, we're used to, here on campus, our, our current system, BEARS, is a, is a very sort of flat, static report. Uh, you run the report, you print the 128-page report, uh, and then you try to parse the 128 pages into something that makes sense to you. Uh, but with Cal Planning, we have these great interactive reports. Uh, you can run one report at a really high level, and then you can drill into it live on the screen to find the piece of data that you're really looking for. Uh, and it does precisely that. It makes, it, it makes the whole thing aggregatable, and it's something that you can drill through or back up uh, to get a bigger picture view of. And that makes our information visible uh, at all levels of the campus. Um, we'll be able to see very easily how much money do we have? Uh, what sources did that money come from? What are we doing with it? Uh, and hopefully this helps us to find areas where we could reduce spending and be more efficient. Uh, and helps us understand what's our capacity to do new things. Uh, there are lots of important needs on campus right now. Uh, investments in student services, investments in facilities, investments in the academic program and in research. Uh, we need to do everything we can in order to align our resources with our ability to deliver on that. And uh, Cal Planning is going to be a big help. Um, so I'll turn this over to Kathy to talk a little bit about the we schedule. We are so green. We're all sharing the same presentation. 
So this is just a look at what, uh, where we currently are. So I don't know how many folks were around that last year in March, but we actually had a phase zero in which we delivered a conference room pilot. And the local implementation managers, the people in the schools were able to get in and sort of understand the technology a little bit and be able to start to think about it um, to help us go forward. Um, in September, we went live with our phase one, which was simply the reporting capabilities. Uh, we took data from uh, the general ledger and from the temp budget and per budget and pulled them all into um, uh, our uh, reporting cube, if you will, and allowed people to begin using some of these reporting tools, the drill up, the drill down features, the ad hoc querying directly through Excel, and that was very, uh, that gave people a really good idea of, of what they were gonna be getting into. So our phase two go live, is just a short time away, um, very short. Uh, that's why the team isn't here. They're back uh, at the farm growing the crops. Um, and in that phase, uh, we're gonna be focusing in on the preparation of operating budgets for FY 12, 13 at a fairly high level. We're not going super deep into our organization down at the department level yet. Some of these changes that we're doing are so transformational that uh, we wanna make sure that we have folks are really secure at the, at the finance offices and the various units, and then we begin to think about our plans to move them uh, further down, which will occur um, in our phase two expanded uh, phase, which would be over the summer and fall. We'll be able to do rolling onboarding of people as they're ready to come in uh, and engage with their operating budget. Uh, and then phase three is actually um, a more granular level of budgeting. Right now we're doing a summary line item detail budget, um, which you guys are already familiar with. This will be um, a buildup of detail uh, position and employee budgeting um, that will allow you to you know, do a better job of kind of predicting uh, you know, vacancy savings and those kinds of things through this tool um, as part of your budget process. Um, oh. Nice driving. Um, this is just a virtual look. Um, the, the numbers of users are incremental, so we're going from 50 users to 100 users. We're going from 100 to 150 with our phase two. This is most of the finance offices across the campus. And then um, we expect to sort of double that number of users over the summer and fall as people get in and, and are able to do um, a quarterly reforecast in October. Uh, and then the number at the bottom is um, dependent to high degree on where people wanna go with this in their individual units as we go forward and, and who's gonna be working on budgets, et cetera, in the future, so. So I'm gonna pass it off to John. With all due respect to my two colleagues here, I always think I have the funnest job because I get to go out and work with the campus. Um, I hate to admit it, I've actually been on campus for 18 years and have seen a lot of system implementations and have participated in a lot of systems implementations. This has to be the, um, the most resources I've seen on a system implementation dedicated to maximizing the value of the system that was implemented. And so that really is my job, is these wonderful folks have figured out the process and have put the tool in, which is an amazing feat. And I get to go out and work with the campus to make sure we really know how to utilize it to get each of our businesses done. And so what we've put together is a robust process over the next 18 months. Our team is gonna go out and be working with the campus at the divisional level and making sure that we can maximize all these things that are changing in our, in our world. And one of the things that we're trying to do is to make visible well, what does the financial analyst role, chief financial officer of a division, what is that new role? What does the future look like? And we're trying to break it down so that we can start easy. Let's just get to an operating budget. And we're starting with an operating summary budget. And then we're gonna keep building on that, a whole evolutionary process that's really gonna take us about two years to get to. But it's gonna be really exciting as we really start to see our numbers in a real budget against actuals and we start to analyze the variance of that. Um, so what we put up here is some of the things that people should start expect to be looking at. This is what we're gonna focus on and this is what we're gonna go out working with each division in a phased series. Make sure that we're all doing really well and we're gonna get to practice this 
and get our hands on it and look at it, and then we're going to get to share best practices across the campus as well. So we are learning as we're out working with our colleagues on campus because no way does Central or the team have all the answers. And so what we are committed to doing is documenting the things that we're learning and making sure we share that on a, on a broader level. So things to be thinking about in this next phase, we really want people just to focus between now and May 18th on getting to an operating budget, understanding what an operating budget is, understanding how the numbers have shifted and changed the mindset that Laurent had been talking about. It's different, and we need to spend a little bit of time to know where everything is, and then we can get back up and feel our, uh, be able to do the level of analysis that we really want to do. It's going to come, it's going to feel new on May, on April 2nd, but I bet by May 18th we're going to have these experts popping up all over campus, and so we want to get back to that. So that's the phase right now. And then as soon as we get our operating budget in, we're going to start in a cohort series saying, how do we maximize that operating budget at the divisional level? What is your process? How do we maximize the process? How do we maximize the tool? And then let's start getting ready for a mid-year review um, and maximizing and understanding um, our numbers in, in real detail. So we'll be doing that between um, June and uh, December. So the key part is we've put together a team uh, across the campus, and so we have UCB leads that um, have come up to work with us. We have Tessie Axon from Letters and Science. We have Mary Stapleton from the University Health Services. And we have Kevin Argus from the Haas School of Business. And they have been really helpful in making sure that everything that we put together and think about really does address the needs of the divisions. And they've also been really helpful because we found that people who have gone through this explain it better to someone who's going through it at, at that time. So um, we're really excited to have them on board and then they have good analytical backing of our internal team that is also a part of it. So again, we'll be focusing um, between now and May 18th on the operating budget, doing working sessions. There's a very exciting new method that we've put together which is, uh, we call it all our cart. Um, it's about 10 laptops which will come to you and the whole method is to sit down and work with you, sit right next to you, and, and work on your operating budget. So in, in addition, this is an addition to the training resources that we're doing in budget process, as well as the tool itself. So we're trying to come up with new creative methods to, to be out there and working with the campus, and um, we continue to innovate on that. Great, thank you, John. Um, So, a little bit about the learning and support infrastructure that we have in place for campus as we're rolling out this big change, this new tool. Uh, we're going to be doing um, four-hour training sessions about the budget process and about various changes to sort of the mechanics of how budgets are going to come together in this year and going forward. Uh, there's also a four-hour training about how you use the tool. It's a great great tool and it's it's a little sophisticated so it needs a little bit of training on just the the mechanics of it and how it works um, and then the thing I'm most excited about uh, we're gonna be doing these working sessions uh, where we'll have a training room set aside and um, we'll have a three or four hour block uh, where campus users can come in and there will be folks from the campus budget office from outreach and from Cal planning there and uh, the idea is that you can come in with your team and sit down and work with uh, the budget office on process or questions about what the provost or the chancellor might want from you, exactly what does it mean, these portions of the uh, budget call letter, things like that, or with outreach about how you can integrate it into your local systems, what we can do to support you in those efforts, and uh, Cal planning about um, technical things, you know, if there are uh, issues on the technical side. Um, and we'll just roll up our sleeves and find out what your issues are, figure out what we can do to support you in that, and just work with you and your people on your data uh, in order to get through the budget process this year. So I think that's going to be really great. It's probably going to be more helpful for us than for you uh, on campus because we get to learn uh, what the issues really are in your units and how we can better support you. Uh, We'll also be doing the traditional e-learning stuff, UPKs and um, you know maybe online courses. 
Uh, that won't be available until after the budget process this year, but that'll be a big help for other users as they come on through the next phase. Um, job aids, reference guides, uh, and the outreach teams uh, who will be reaching out to folks uh, as is their want. Um, so campus user involvement, this, like I said, is really the thing that has made this project special for me. Um, uh, we've done, um, Kathy really, and uh, John and others on the project before I was, uh, uh, created this excellent group of local implementation managers. Um, it's 50, 60 different finance folks from around the campus, uh, really from every major unit on campus, who've met at least monthly, often more frequently, uh, over the last year and a half to talk about what's coming, talk about their concerns and their issues and their desires. What, you know, what do we want from the tool? What can we do uh, to make it work for you folks? Uh, we also had a limb steering committee uh, for smaller, sort of more um, dynamic discussions with uh, about 15 folks from around campus who uh, lead major units. And that's been really the engine that drove the whole design and how we're approaching this. Uh, and recently we started something that we've called the Financial Planning and Analysis Forum. And this is a, uh, the idea is that this will be an ongoing community of practice for finance professionals on campus. Uh, this is something that I desperately wanted when I came to campus uh, seven and a half years ago. I worked at the law school prior to joining the budget office. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure there were communities out there. I just didn't know how to find it. And I found that I really had to invent uh, the wheel on my own sort of at the law school uh, just because there wasn't the support systems. There wasn't the training that we needed in order to uh, learn this really complex financial environment here at the university. Uh, so I'm really hopeful that this group will continue and help build uh, connections and share tips and tricks and best practices uh, around the campus going forward. Uh, so I think we have a few minutes for questions, so I should shut up now and uh, hear from you folks. Hi, you mentioned uh, early in your remarks that there are some conceptual shifts in the new um, budgeting environment. And often those are the most challenging. And so I'm just curious what you see as the big conceptual shifts. Mm -hmm. I did notice that you're using the phrase operating budget. And uh, as a former MSO from a few decades ago, I always thought my temp budget was my operating budget. So if you could say a little bit about how those are different to you. Thanks. Gotcha. Uh, that's a great question. So um, I think one of the biggest differences between the temporary budget and the operating budget uh, is that the temporary budget kind of mixed together uh, stocks and flows of money. Um, it, you have your reappropriations in there. Uh, and it winds up looking like an expense budget. But in fact, it's kind of a balance. Uh, Another difference between the temporary budget and the operating budget is that in the temporary budget, if you plan for a flow of money uh, from one part of the university to the other, say the dean of the School of Law was going to donate $10,000 to help support a conference at uh, the School of Social Welfare, uh, doing the plan actually transacts the, the transfer of funds. Uh, in the new world, in the operating budget, you can separate these two concepts. You could plan to do it, but not actually do it yet, and then enact that transfer later. This sounds like a simple thing, uh, but it's actually a really big shift in the way we think about budgets here on campus. Uh, and it has some really big benefits uh, in that you can plan for things before you know exactly what they're going to be, uh, which is a major limitation of the current system. Um, so is that responsive? Okay. Other questions? I think that brings us to the end of our uh, scheduled time. Um, the team, uh, the panel, will be in, available in the lobby for the next half an hour to answer additional questions. And if you uh, need to leave now, please write down questions on the evaluation forums. Put them in the box in the back of the room, and we'll make sure you, we get your questions answered. And please join me in thanking Kathy and John and Laurent. <laughs>